My friend Raylene had asked for a tour of the garden and it is a gorgeous day here in western Washington and I thought why not go ahead and do a video so for Raylene and anyone else who is interested in taking a tour of my forest garden here you go I created this garden um, started working on it about uh, not quite four years ago this used to be all invasive blackberries and I have slowly been transforming it into an edible garden I would say about 90-95% of the garden um, is edible so it's still a baby garden, but it is, uh, I think, a really exciting work in progress. It's been a real labor of love, and um, I will try and talk through some of the things that I'm most excited about to give you an idea of what I'm growing here. Okay, so here we are down at the bottom of the garden. Unfortunately, it sounds like my neighbor is doing lawn work, so hopefully that's not going to cause an issue with the video. Um, but let's see, here is one thing I'm really excited about. As you can see, it's a pretty large tree. This is a Pakistan mulberry, and it should get to about 30 feet. Let's see if we look closely. There you can see mulberry. None of these are ripe just yet. They're still green. Um, and so far I haven't gotten any fruit uh, maybe one, um, but the birds keep eating them, uh, and that's kind of the story of my garden at this point. I'm mostly feeding the wildlife, although I'm still enjoying some of it myself. I do let a lot of things go to seed, and so you can see I have oregano pretty much everywhere. Here it is, not going to flower quite yet, but obviously huge amounts of oregano here, and then... Up here you can see that purple flower is the sage and then this yellow flower that looks sort of like a little firecracker bursts that is parsley that I've let go to seed and the pollinators absolutely love both of these flowers in fact they're probably the favorite of every flower in my garden So you can see there's a ladybug there. This is a western yarrow. It's a native here. Um, it is a wonderful medicinal. It's edible. I use it in teas. I make my own herbal teas, so a lot of the things growing here in the garden go into my teas. This is lovage. lovage. It is another umbel for plant that the pollinators really seem to love. When I first bought the parsley, it was just the tiny plant and it has self-seeded over the last couple of years. And this is what my current patch looks like here. And it's actually kind of everywhere else in the garden as well. And here's the sage. The bumblebees especially love this. This is just your normal garden sage that you would find in um, grocery store or herb cabinet, but um, if you let it go to seed, it has these beautiful purple flowers. Uh, they're kind of on the tail end at this point, which is why they look kind of dried out, but like I say, the bumblebees in particular especially really love them. I mentioned growing yo uh, yarrow for my teas, and I started off with just the white, and I did buy a paprika um, which is kind of a reddish orange flower, um, a, you know, a different type of cultivar of yarrow, and it died, never came back. Although this year, all of a sudden, I've got a lot of them kind of pinkish, so I don't know if that's because of something my neighbor is growing, that they're combining from the white into this pink, or if it's maybe because of that paprika I planted two years ago. Either way, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited to see it in my garden. So this is lemon balm. Um, again, something else I put in my teas. It's great for digestion. And um, a lot of people have problems with it just kind of taking over. Unfortunately, I have not had that problem. I wish I had. I had it a few different places throughout the garden and it is super well behaved. I 
have lavender um, all throughout the garden and outside the garden as well. There was a metallic sweat bee I was trying to get and unfortunately, oh, there it is. I think these are some of the prettiest insects. Anyway, pollinators galore. They absolutely love all the flowers here. Um, so yeah, so going back to lavender, lots and lots and lots of lavender everywhere all throughout the garden. Um, I use it in lots of teas. I'm also growing calendula. Um, you, these are all spent and they actually have the, the coolest seeds. You can see, look at these funky little seeds. This is what their seeds look like. Uh, but calendula is a great medicinal. I put it in teas. You can also put it in salves. And honestly, it's just a really pretty happy flower. I do have a couple of cherries. This is one cherry. It's not producing this year. I had to move it last year because of um, the drainage work. We had a lot of construction uh, that went through the garden to provide uh, drainage around the house to keep the basement from flooding and so um, this hopefully will produce next year or the following but it's kind of on a break since it had to be moved over the last year it's my neighbor's field and then here we have blueberries I have blueberries all throughout the garden uh, they uh, have maybe eight different varieties, I want to say, and they all mature at different times. And so these are, I think, the mid, I can't remember what variety this is, I'd have to look it up, but these are mid-season ripeners. And I have some that are just turning elsewhere in the garden that I can show you that are an earlier season. So here's the cherry tree that is producing. Handful of fruits. I'm sure the birds will get them all. This is a jostaberry. It's a cross between a currant and a gooseberry. There you can see. We've got one ripe and then a bunch of others that are still green. Uh, this is my first year getting such a plethora of them. Uh, in the past, I only got a handful and the birds ate them all. So hopefully, I'll have a chance to actually eat some this year. And then this tree here is still a baby. Actually, everything's a baby. The oldest thing in here, it's like three years. Um, but this is a cornus moss or cornelian cherry. It's in the dogwood family. But it has these little fruits on there that turn red and I believe taste somewhat like cherries. This will be, this is my first year actually getting fruit in most things in my garden, especially the trees. So here's one blueberry, you can see it's starting to be ripe. This is one of the early ripening ones. And then behind it, uh, lots more oregano, you can see mixed in there, and then chives. I'll let, again, everything go to seed. Um, the chives will produce all sorts of little babies everywhere, uh, and the pollinators absolutely love it. And it's one of the first um, plants to flower in the spring. In addition to two cherry trees, I have some cherry bushes. You can see they have some small cherries. Uh, this is my first year getting a decent amount. And again, the birds will probably eat them all. Um, so I haven't had a chance to try them yet. But this bush cherry is a little bit more tart than the sweet cherry that's on the tree. So a lot of the water from our property, uh, from our driveway and, and from the roof, flows into this dry creek. It's filled mostly with native plants so they can handle a flood basically in the winter and then uh, pretty much a drought in the summer because we don't get really any rain um, during the summer months here in our part of the Pacific Northwest. This is one native that I particularly love. It's called Henderson's Checker Mallow. Pollinators love it and it's just so pretty. One of the native flowers that I absolutely love, you can see this here, it's called Large Flowered Colomia. This is its second year. The first year when I planted it by seed, uh, they popped up with just a single stem and these beautiful little orangey flowers. And now this year in their second year, they have self-sown and you can see the pollinators there. You know, they have self-sown and it's like one plant with t just tons and tons of blossoms on it. More blueberries. These are my baby blueberries. They are very compact 
you can see even though they're compact they still have oodles and oodles of berries on them and then uh, intermixed strawberries there's strawberries everywhere uh, but these are lingonberries which are very petite little shrubs with tiny berries that so far all the critters have gotten so I haven't gotten to try yet and then again more blueberries lots and lots of blueberries and again these are all compact so they won't get uh, higher than probably three feet This beautiful shrub is a honeyberry, also called a hascap. And the birds have eaten most of it, but let's see. I do see some berries in here. You can see just right there. A handful of berries still in here that the birds have not gotten. This is um, very similar to a blueberry, but the berries are elongated and are more tart compared to a blueberry. This next door, this is called a gumi berry. It's a fairly large shrub, uh, about eight feet maybe. And this, uh, this is its third year here. You can see these beautiful berries. These are edible. Um, they're not ready quite yet. They turn kind of a reddish color when they're ripe. And um, this is one of the first plants to bloom in the spring and you can see these beautiful little flowers when they first come out all these little whitish yellowy flowers um, are so fragrant they smell sort of like a sweet vanilla and the bees just flock to this shrub it's a nitrogen fixing shrub it's super easy um, you know you can prune it and you know just keep it whatever size you want but anyway it's it's and the, the fruit's edible and it's delicious this is Probably my favorite shrub in my entire garden. I'll back up and you can see. There you go. More parsley. <laughs> lots and lots of parsley and yarrow pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, you can see the birds. The birds are everywhere in my garden at all times. Um, I do, the clover has just come in on its own. I leave it. Again, the pollinators, especially the bumblebees, just absolutely love it. This is Egyptian walking onion. And you can see it has created these little bulbils. And eventually, you can see they're going to eventually droop over plant themselves into the ground and then we'll eventually have a very large um you know little collection of the onion you can see there you go down here they'll just continue to grow till we have like a a patch of them uh let's see i am growing some annuals in here this is a very small um sweet bell pepper we don't have a very long growing season, and so it's helpful rather than doing large tomatoes or large peppers, we're able to do smaller ones here. The owners before had a beautiful rose garden, at least I assume it was beautiful at one point. By the time we moved in, it was so overgrown. Um, we had to dig out all the blackberries that had overtaken it and um, I salvaged what I could. So we have a number, this is an antique ballerina. Um, uh, Rose is the only one that had the tag, so I don't know the names of the others. Here's a close up of the red one. Like I say, this is my favorite for teas. Uh, most of these large ones are past their prime, um, but they smell lovely and I think are a really nice addition to the garden. Not only are they edible because I put them in my teas, uh, and you can actually make, um, you know, jellies and things with them, um, rose water, all sorts of things, actually. Uh, a lot of people don't think of eating roses, but you can. Um, but they also just smell amazing and make the garden a wonderful place to be. This whole section here is raspberries, and I don't really have any that are quite ready yet. We've had a slow summer which I suppose is not atypical. Um, you can see 
We have a lot of berries in here, but none are quite re ready yet. All right, here we go. I'm, I can't remember the variety, but we do have a couple here that are just about ready. Then I also have Logan berries, and they uh, grow pretty long, like 15, 20 feet. So I have this metal that I can wrap them around. Otherwise, they just kind of spread everywhere. But you can see, obviously, they're not ripe, even close to being ripe quite yet. One of my favorite things about the garden is the wildlife. Like you can see, I have oodles of snakes getting bigger every day. Uh, sometimes they hang out with me. Sometimes I scare them away. Um, we have three different types of garter snakes that I have seen here in the garden. Here's a bunch of chamomile. And even though I don't actually love the taste of chamomile, it really is a wonderful medicinal. It's perfect for teas and it smells amazing. I actually really, it's just kind of a calming scent just to, you know, to harvest it for the teas is calming in and of itself, much less putting it in the teas. Uh, you can see this is creeping thyme mixed in here as well. And then the yellow is a dyer's chamomile, which I don't believe is used for teas. And then that purpley flower is called um, self-heal or heal all. And that one has invited itself, but is also a great medicinal. This tree is a medlar. I planted it about a year ago. And you can see it does have fruit this year. It has beautiful flowers, almost reminiscent of a dogwood flower. I have not tried this fruit before, but it is, um, it sounds good <laughs> when I read the description. It is supposed to taste sort of like cinnamon applesauce. And you actually have to let it almost go rotten before it's good enough to eat. But then it's supposed to be soft and sweet and delicious. So I guess we'll give it a try. I wish you could see the number of pollinators that are on this parsley. I mean, it is just teeming with all these flying insects. Like I say, parsley really is one of the most beloved flower by all these amazing pollinators you know a lot of people they grow things uh, and then they cut them down when they're finished eating them uh, parsley is it's technically a biennial biennial people think of it um, as an annual and when they're done with it they it starts to flower and they think oh i have to cut it back but if you allow it to flower then you get an amazing benefit of all of these wonderful pollinators who are moving into your garden and doing a great service to pollinate the rest of your um, your plants, but also there are beneficial insects in here that will take out some of the more um, uh, destructive insects. So this is a really wonderful plant to have and just to allow it to be free and uh, to self-sow. This in here is called Suhocene mulberry. It's not actually a mulberry. It's in the nettle family. And um, you can't see it quite yet. So this, <laughs> I thought I'd killed it because you can see what's left of it from last year. It, I thought it did not survive the cold winter that we had, but apparently um, it is just coming back from the ground. So I'm excited about this. This is obviously... Um, just my first year having it come back and it has little berries that will show up all along the stems here last year um, of course the birds ate them all so I didn't have a chance to eat, try any of them yet but it's kind of a neat unusual plant that's one of the things I love about gardening is you can grow things that you can't necessarily find otherwise so to me even though it was a little bit of a risk I wasn't sure how well it would turn out here in my garden um, it seems to be growing beautifully and it's really fun to try something new something I wouldn't have had access to otherwise 
This here is a columnar apple. You can see it's basically just a little stick. <laughs> um, it's not, probably not even three feet quite yet. A um, couple of other sticks. And it does have one little fruit on it, which I probably should have pulled off so it could focus its attention on rooting. But um, I was a little too excited, so I just left it. But um, anyway, this is... Uh, a really great tree to have if you don't have a whole lot of space because again it's just this little stick so it only takes up about two feet width uh, and then it just gets mm, I can't remember maybe eight feet tall so it's really a great option for growing apples and I believe you can get commoner pears as well um, if you have a small space I have thoroughly enjoyed, I'm not going to get too close because I don't want to startle it, but you can see this little baby robin. They have been, they were born um, just next to our front door and they have um, been in the garden quite a bit, which makes sense. Of course, there's lots of food for them. The mom is still um, hanging around, although actually laying uh, around two of eggs in the nest right now but you can see this little baby is so cute it doesn't fly away instead it like hides in little bushes and things um just as if you know you can't see it but oh there it goes anyway i just love having the little babies we had two we had juncos and um song sparrows nesting in the garden this year and then we had uh, juncos also in the Mint Garden, which is just outside the fenced area. I just love it that the wildlife have moved in. It just makes me feel like this garden has truly started to do what I want it to do, which is really just be an asset here. So this is an American persimmon. I was able to get fruit off of it last year, and it was the best fruit I've ever had probably and you can see we actually have a bunch of little fruits coming in now so this I actually bought this this is about four years old um, because I kept it in a pot for the first year before planting it so I am really excited to see hopefully the fruits will be just as good this year as they were last year and this is also one that you let almost get rotten um, before you eat it it's just super soft and amazing absolutely amazing so I'm trying to grow a lot of different currants, and this is what's called, I think, a champagne or a pink currant. You can see they're just now starting to turn kind of this blush color. And I had no idea. Last year it was basically just a stick, so I had no idea that it was going to be so heavily laden. It's just falling to the ground, and I am trying to support it, but it's you see the strap. It's, it's only doing so much good, so I'll have to look into pruning it for next year to see um, the best way to actually support this huge amount of fruit that's coming off of it. I let kale and, again, pretty much everything else go to seed. Here you can see there's a kale flower. The pollinators absolutely love them. And then they do send off little babies. There's a tiny one that apparently something is eating. Um, and a cool spider. But yeah, um, letting everything go to seed I think has made a big difference in the garden to um you know support the pollinators and also you get free plants out of it a lot of people cut it back because i understand it's obviously it's floppy it doesn't look super attractive but i kind of like the wild look and i think it's nice to allow things to just kind of do its own natural thing and you end up i think benefiting from that and then this here these berries this is um, a service berry this is its first year here in the garden. All of this is new. This whole section from the construction that we did a, about a year and a half ago. Uh, so this will be my first year giving it a try. Talking about letting things go to seed. Uh, this is elephant garden garlic, which I don't actually like, but I plant because it has these beautiful flowers, again, that the bees absolutely love. This is my plum tree. Uh, I had to cut off about six feet because it was just growing so profusely and I'm so glad I did because this is the first year last year I got one little plum it was delicious it was a yellow egg plum 
um, which was kind of cool. I don't think I'd ever had a yellow plum before, but this one, this year is just absolutely prolific. I'm not sure how well you can see, but there are oodles and oodles of plums in here. This is um, a combo plum, so it actually has four different varieties of plums. So I'm really excited to see what types of plums I'm actually going to get this year. This beautiful plant here is Angelica. And a friend gave it to me. It was a wonderful gift. And you can see it has these beautiful little balls of uh, clusters of flowers that the pollinators absolutely love. It is also edible. And then just next to it, well, this there's a rhododendron a little bit past its prime today. Um, but that is also something the pollinators love. And then here you can see this is our grape arbor. This is a semi-compact grape that will eventually fill the trellis. This is uh, maybe it's, I want to say it's its second year. And then this one here on the other side of the arbor. This is also its second year, a little bit older, um, but this is a compact variety. So it will probably, um, my guess is it will get up to the top of the trellis, but I don't think it's going, going to go beyond so the other grape can fill the top of the trellis and this one will just be here on the side so who knows maybe next year will be the first year we'll be able to have our own grapes. I grow sugar snap peas every year. I think they taste delicious. They're a really great snack. They're pretty um, flowers and they're great for the soil. This is the first year that I'll be getting apples. And this is a pristine apple tree. It's, um, well, maybe four years old, um, three years old somewhere. But you can see lots of apples. I actually did thin it out um, by removing the smaller apples so that it can put its energy into the remaining apples. I probably should have thinned it even a little bit more, especially since it's so young. But anyway, I'm super excited, and hopefully I'll be getting some good apples out of it this year. A couple of plants that are very new to me that I have not tried before. This is a pawpaw, um, and it's actually a few years old. It doesn't look like it. It's very slow growing, and um, I got it very, very small. It doesn't transplant well, and um, it is currently somewhat protected by super afternoon um, intense sun that we get here on this west-facing garden. And the pawpaw is in the custard family and sounds like it would taste absolutely delicious. I've never actually tried it. Um, that's, again, the beauty of having your own garden is being able to grow things that you've never had before and try them out see what you think. So um, anyway, it might be several years before I actually get any fruit off of this. Uh, I have another one that is tiny, tiny. It's uh, only a year old and it's basically no more than a stick. But um, like I say, the perennial gardening is kind of a long-term plan. So eventually, um, hopefully, this will be a really thriving food forest with lots and lots of food that I can eat for myself and share with others. Here you can see um, I do have a couple of pear trees. They really have not done all that well. There were some issues last year, and I had to prune them really heavily. So I don't have, I haven't gotten any pears off of them yet. Um, this is actually a baby Shapova, this one tree here. It is in the mountain ash family, and this particular one has not produced for me, but I have had them before, and honestly, I think they taste just as good, if not better, than a regular pear, and so far seems to be hardier. So moving forward, depending on how this goes, I might actually suggest, at least in our area, planting baby Shapova instead of a traditional pear, but we'll see. Um, I have had a pear here before that the previous owners planted that um, unfortunately got taken out in a snowstorm, but it was very prolific and hardy, so hopefully that means good things for these two pears that I have here in the garden. Do you have daylilies in the garden? These are technically edible, though I actually have not tried them yet. These are gifted to me by my next door neighbor. And again, if you'll notice, a lot of things in this garden were gifted to me. I think the garden is all about sharing, and it's really nice that 
when you have an excess or you have something that just doesn't work in your garden you have the ability to share it with someone else who can really enjoy it and uh, that's something that I have been a great recipient of and I'm so grateful for and am excited that I'm at a position now where I can start sharing as well so I mentioned strawberries, oodles, and oodles, and oodles of strawberries. I've kind of taken over with strawberries. They fill the pathway. This is technically a pathway here. Um, but I just let them go, honestly, because, well, in my mind, I don't really particularly mind um, if I just step on them. But it gives me lots to share with all the critters, and it enables me to have um, tons for myself as well but you can see just so many strawberries everywhere you look strawberries 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 this is an asparagus garden here i grew them first a uh, year ago and then this year only had a handful of these larger ones here these ferns you can see these are the ones that came back last year or the, excuse me this year from last year's planting and um, I originally had a bunch of strawberries in this bed, and I think the asparagus didn't like the competition, even though I had read you could plant strawberries and asparagus together. And so a friend was kind enough to give me some extras that she had, so those are now here in this garden bed. Um, asparagus takes a long time. You have to let it grow for about four years or so before you can start harvesting it. So it's a long-term commitment, but then it grows for about 20 years. So I've grown it before um, in my previous garden and I'm excited to have it as part of the garden this year. Well, that wasn't nearly as brief as I had thought it might be. Um, and of course, I didn't even cover like half the plants in here. But hopefully you enjoyed the tour. That's for you, Raylene, and anybody else who's interested. Um, honestly, this garden is a really special place for me, so I'm pretty glad to share it. And um, I hope you get a lot out of just seeing uh, what a forest garden could look like. Uh, mine's maybe a little bit messier and crazier than some. But it's really exciting to be able to grow your own food, to spend time out in wildlife, to be able to provide food source and coverage and um, nectar and all these uh, great things for wildlife as well. And it's just, it's a really serene place that's peaceful. It's a great place to connect with friends and family. And it, you know, has just been a really wonderful way for me to get in some physical exercise and just enjoy my time out in nature. So whatever your garden looks like, I hope you have the chance to spend some time out nature today.